Okay, this is section uh, 12.4. We're going to talk about phase changes today. We're going to explain how the addition of and removal of energy causes a phase change and interpret a phase change diagram. Uh, phase change is, this, is the uh, change of one state of matter to the other. So if we go from a solid to a liquid, that's a phase change. From a liquid to a vapor or a gas, that's, a, that's also a phase change. And back again. So those are what phase changes are. We talk about melting point, vaporization versus evaporation, vapor pressure, boiling point. All these we talked about in the video. In the video, matter changes phase when energy is added or removed. Okay, phase changes require that require energy. Melting an object, um, melting occurs when heat flows into a solid object. So an object goes from solid. To liquid, that's that's um, called melting. Heat is the transfer of energy from an object at a higher temperature to an object at a lower temperature. Okay, so this little chart down here explains all the different um, the vocabulary we have. Okay, if we if I start up here at the top, gas. If a gas goes from a gas to a liquid, that's condensation. Okay, that's what happens when uh, you have, you know, the uh, over leave your car parked out overnight, and then there's like a whole bunch of dew on it in the morning. That's the water vapor in the air condensing to, to the liquid water in the um, on your windshield. And if it gets cold enough, it goes that liquid water on your windshield will become frost. It will freeze into a solid that you have to scrape off or do something with to do that. So that's going from gas to a liquid is condensation. From liquid to freezing is um, from liquid to solid is freezing. Okay. So if we go from solid to liquid, that's melting, right? We know that. From liquid to a gas, that's vaporization. Okay. But you can also go directly from solids to gases. And these may be these two terms over here may not be what you're used to hearing. So if you go from solid to a gas, that's called sublimation. Okay, that happens if you, like if you have something in the freezer, like you put some, a steak in the freezer and it's wrapped up in butcher paper or something, and you take it out a month or two later and part of it is, looks like it's been burned. Okay, that's called freezer burn. And that's what happens when the solid the solid ice actually um, turns into gas. It goes directly from solid to gas. And it doesn't happen too often. Or sometimes you have ice cubes that have been in the in the in the freezer all winter. You haven't used them, and it looks like the ice tray is like about half empty. Well, that's sublimation too. And deposition is the opposite of that. It's when a gas um, a gas goes from doesn't go into liquid phase. It goes from gas right to a solid okay and so the other form of sublimation that you may be familiar with is dry ice frozen carbon dioxide it goes from a solid directly to a gas without any liquid form and you know if you if you get carbon dioxide cold enough it doesn't stay it's not liquid unless it's under pressure but under normal atmospheric things it goes from gas directly to solid when ice is heated, the ice eventually absorbs enough energy to break the hydrogen bonds that hold the water molecules together. When the bonds break, the particles move apart and the ice melts into water. The melting point of a crystalline solid is a temperature which the forces holding the crystal lattice together are broken and it becomes a liquid. So it requires enough kinetic energy that those molecules overcome the attractive forces between them and they break apart and are able to flow over each other. Uh, liquids with enough energy uh, escape from the liquid into the gas phase. So this they have a chart of kinetic energy here and over here they have how much kinetic energy something needs um, to escape for vaporization. This is the energy distribution in a liquid. Okay, so this is where most of the energy is in a liquid is on this peak here, but some of it is always over here. It has enough. So the, this is the average kinetic energy. So if we were measuring the temperature, we would say, okay, this this peak here would be, you know, would, or maybe a little to the right of the peak would be the where we get the temperature of that. But there's always some molecules that have enough energy to 
vaporize, go into vapor. There's always looks like this curve. And so that's why something, you know, a liquid will eventually um, evaporate totally because there's, you know, in every distribute, every, in the water, in the water, well, I'm thinking mostly of water, the, um, there's enough energy as some of those molecules will escape and be vaporized. Okay, vaporization is a process by which a liquid changes into a gas or vapor. Evaporization only happens at the surface of a liquid. Vaporization is when the whole liquid has enough energy to change into a gas. This is just happening. The vapor, evaporation just happens at the surface of a liquid. Vapor pressure is what we, the pressure of a um, gas or vapor oh, that liquid have liquid and you have some uh, evaporated vapor over the top of it that's you know and these arrows going back and forth indicate that it's in equilibrium right there's as many escaping the liquid and going into gas and there's some that are going from the gas back to liquid it's an equilibrium here and there's some pressure of uh, from that gas that exerts against the sides of that uh, container there the boiling point is the temperature which the vapor pressure of a liquid equal, equals the atmospheric pressure. For, so for water, that's 100 degrees. Okay, so the vapor pressure is equal to equal to the atmospheric pressure, and then the water will turn into a vapor. Okay, so there's that that pressure that's pushing down on that is the the heat has enough intermolecular enough energy to overcome that and it goes from liquid into um, vapor. Sublimation, the process which a solid changes to a gas without becoming a liquid. Dry ice is an example of that. As heat flows from water to the surroundings, uh, the particles lose energy. They're going backwards, they're going to freezing when the temperature of a liquid is converted to a crystalline solid. As energy flows from the water vapor, the velocity decreases. The process by which a gas or a vapor becomes a liquid is called condensation. Deposition, it goes from a gas directly to a solid. It's the reverse of sublimation. Phase diagram is a graph of pressure versus temperature, and then it shows the different, uh, different temperature and pressure which phase the substance will be in. Okay, so this is a phase diagram for water, and the triple point, which is down here, is represents um, a temperature and pressure which all three phases can co coexist. So at this temperature and pressure here, it's a pretty low pressure, one uh, pretty low temperature too. One atmosphere is normal pressure, and 100 degrees is boiling. So you know, water is mostly um, follows this line at atmosphere at room. At normal pressure that follows this line goes from freezing to boiling across that line. If we lower the pressure down to here and lower the temperature, we get a kind of this solid liquid vapor thing going on all at once. But most of the time, we're doing between two different phases at different temperatures and pressures. You know, over here, we're going between liquid and solid depending on the pressure. And the pressure over here we're going between liquid and vapor. Okay, so the triple point just happens down here. And you can also go from solid directly to a vapor if the pressure is low enough over here. These are the phase diagrams for a couple different things um, for carbon dioxide and carbon. And carbon doesn't look like it has a triple point really. Triple point for carbon dioxide is here. And you can see it's quite a bit above where uh, the pressure and temperature, well, the temperature is pretty pretty low here for um, carbon dioxide is almost a gas all the time. Okay, so the addition of energy to water molecules causes them to Right, they're not going to freeze, they're not going to form a crystal lattice, they're not going to move closer together, and they're going to be a water change to a water vapor. Transfer of energy from one object to another object to another at lower temperature is, and the only thing we talked about in this whole video that was in this answers, is heat. 
Okay, so that's the end of the video. Answer the questions on the form below, and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.